Hello everybody. Welcome to this session of Technician 2024. This event is by IEEE CS of VIT Vellore and my name is Niharika Gupta and I am from Junior Core IEEE CS and my topic is Basis of Data Analytics and Machine Learning using Python. If you are here at Tuesday, 9th January 2024 at 9 p.m., then you can catch up the video live. I used Jupyter Notebook so that I can show the outputs more efficiently. So now moving on to the meat of the matter, we'll talk about what exactly data analysis is. Data analysis is a process of inspecting, cleansing, transforming, and modeling data with the goal of discovering useful information, informing in conclusions, and supporting decision making. Data analysis has multiple facets and approaches, encompassing diverse techniques and is used in different businesses, sciences, social sciences. <clears throat> the applications of data analysis finds across various domains and its importance continues to grow as organization seeks to derive valuable insights from ever increasing volume of the data. The first application we'll talk about is telecommunication. And we'll talk about network optimization, customer churn prediction. Uh, customer churn prediction is we'll like uh, predict and reduce customer churn through data analysis. And secondly, if we talk about business intelligence, organizations use data analysis to gain insights into their operations, customer behavior, and market trends. Business intelligence tools helps in reporting, dashboard creation, and ad hoc query analysis to support decision making. Third application if we talk about is financial analysis, that is risk management and fraud detection. It's very much useful in fraud detection that identify usual patterns and abnormalities identified for fraudulent activities. Fourth, it's sports analysis, that can be fan engagement, performance analysis. And fifth, we'll talk about government and public policy, that can be very much useful in crime analysis and policy evaluation. In crime analysis, use data to understand crime patterns and allocate resources for law enforcement. And policy evaluation, analyze data to access the impact of public policies and programs. And sixthly, that is the last point we'll talk about environmental monitoring. That is climate change analysis. Analyze environmental data to monitor and understand climate change patterns and natural disaster prediction. That is, use data analysis to predict and imitate the impact of natural disasters. We'll mainly focus on environmental monitoring. And I have put an example by which we can analyze that environmental monitoring or weather prediction data. In this, weather prediction relies heavily on data analysis, employing advanced computational models and algorithms to interrupt vast amount of data from various sources. And if we talk about the usage of weather prediction, then there are so many models available and firstly we'll talk about numerical weather prediction model that, in, that involves data assimilation in which numerical weather prediction model assimilate observational data from satellites, ground-based stations, weather balloons and other sources into initial conditions of the model. This process helps to reduce uncertainties in model starting point. And the second point is model stimulation. High performance computing is used to stimulate complex atmospheric processes based on mathematical equations. These stimulations generate forecasts for various weather parameters such as temperature, humidity, wind speed, and precipitation. Secondly, we'll talk about in the usage of weather prediction as data visualization, in which there is weather maps and charts and storm tracking. In the first point, that is visualization tools help meteorological interrupt complex data sets and communicate weather forecasts to the public in an extensible manner. And the second point, that is storm tracking, in which we visualize the data on maps, allows meteorologists to track the movement of storms, helping in predicting their path in the intensity. And the most important uh, model we'll talk about and we'll also learn in this video, that is machine learning and artificial intelligence model. In this, we'll first point we'll talk about is pattern recognition. It's a very important point in which machine learning algorithm can identify patterns and relationships in historical weather data, helping improve the accuracy of prediction. And second point is prediction of extreme events. 
Advanced machine learning models are used to predict extreme weather events such as Ukraine's tornadoes and heat waves by analyzing historical patterns and current condition. And the last one we'll talk about, there are so many methods, but uh, we'll not talk about all these methods. So this is the last one we will talk about descriptive statistics, that is mean, median, mode, measure of central tendency that describes the center of the data set. And second point is range, variance, standard deviation. That is measures of dispersion that describe the spread of the data. And third point is percentiles and quantifiers. Divide the data into intervals, providing a sense of distribution. And uh, that is data visualization as well, like from charts and graphs, dashboards, and heat maps, scatter plots, and box plots, which also involves in machine learning models and in uh, artificial intelligence models. So we'll talk about this in this further video. And machine learning is a quite good method of analyzing the data and in which we'll uh, talk about supervised learning, unsupervised learning and deep learning. We'll not do that much but we'll cover the basic part that in which we'll supervise learning we'll talk about and we'll train the model on the label data set to make predictions or classifications. In unsupervised learning we'll just identify the patterns and relationship without label data and just analyze the data. In deep learning involves neutral networks and multiple layers of complex math pattern recognition. We'll mainly focus on supervised learning. And uh, which is very important point which comes that data analysis with Python. Python is a powerful and widely used programming language for data analysis due to this extensible libraries and framework. <clears throat> there are so many libraries on there in Python. We'll mostly talk about NumPy, Pandas, Kitplotlearn. So if we talk about, firstly, we'll talk about NumPy. NumPy is a fundamental for numerical computing in Python. It provides support for large multidimensional arrays and matrices along with mathematical functions to operate on these arrays. We'll take one example on NumPy, a very simple example in which I'm using a Jupyter notebook in which I have imported the NumPy library using the proper command. And now I'm taking one one dimensional array named as data and I'm figuring out the mean of the array in which I will figure out the mean. And if we run our program, we'll see the mean of the given one dimensional array is coming out to be 3.0. Now going to the second library, we'll talk about pandas. Pandas is a powerful library for data manipulation and analysis. It provides data structures like data frame for efficient data handling and manipulation. We'll talk about a small example for pandas as well. We take a two-dimensional array named as data only. And in this also, we'll figure out the mean age. That means we'll take a name and the age. So we'll figure out the mean of our age taken to our data which is coming out to we'll run a program and it's coming and our output is coming out to be 25.66 so next library we'll talk about oh this is very important this is matplotlab and seaborn matplotlab is a versatile plotting library a seaborn is a built on matplot to enhance its capabilities and provide a high level interference for statistical graphics it helps in providing graphs and importing this is a very basic library to import on our laptop in which I'll run the program and if I run it it's coming out to be no error and it's been run in our and evaluated successfully so we'll plot more graphs like histographs pie charts and all in our further video now skipi skipi is very important skipi builds on numpy and provides additional functionality on scientific computing it includes module for optimization integration interpolation eigenvalues programs and more and lastly we'll talk about skit learn but first let's take an example of skipi so we have taken two groups of one dimension and we figure out in the test value in this we'll what we do is we train our model and give our model some values and i'm printing out the mean value and if we run a program it's coming out to be correct 
it's coming out to be 0 0.34 okay yeah and the last library if we talk about it's Kitlearn. Kitlearn is a machine learning library that provides simple and efficient tool for data mining and data analysis. It includes various algorithms for classification, regression, clustering, and more. If we talk about, if we have taken a small example. I've taken a small, like, uh, I have, like, imported NumPy and then imported Pandas and then taken a variable as data in which I have taken, this is my local file on my laptop. I can show you my CSV file as well. So this is uh, my CSV file. This is having a mileage. This is of mileage of some uh, automobile mileage, the age and the sales price of that automobile. And then I've taken uh, I've taken uh, this data and been reading this data using the CSV file in Python. And this data has been printed over here. And I've taken the X value as mileage and age. And Y as sales price. In this, I'll show you X is mileage and age, and Y is sales price. And I'm printing this data like we can print it like that only. And now I'm using SQLearn model. First, we need to import train test split. In this, what we can, what is exactly we're doing is we are training the model, and we are printing out, we are printing out the prediction of how much and what percentage is being there or what's the accuracy um, i'll talk about this all these things model will i'll explain this in the further video if it's not been explained or if you didn't understand that much so if we go on the further we'll go on the further video so first we'll understand what exactly how do we analyze our example or by machine learning models and then we'll talk about what exactly this model is so we talk about analyzing weather prediction patterns by ml models in python i have taken a small example of weather prediction over here in which i have taken a uh, precipitation maximum temperature the temperature minimum temperature wind and the weather and we'll predict by our machine learning model so first we'll understand what do we need to do so we'll analyze weather prediction patterns using machine learning models in python involving leveraging historical weather data to build predictive models that can assist in forecasting future weather conditions and the importance yeah the importance of weather prediction is really very important what are the sources or what are the steps we're going to take first we'll take talk about data significance Weather data is crucial for predicting future weather patterns and making informed decision. And secondly, we'll talk about data sources. Weather data can be collected from various sources, including satellites, weather systems, and sensors. And thirdly, that is data parameters. Key parameters in weather data include temperature, humidity, wind speed, and precipitation. Secondly, <clears throat> now we'll talk about the main part. The main part is data collection. The first step in this process is obtaining historical weather data. This data typically includes a range of meteorological variables such as temperature, humidity, wind speed, atmospheric pressure and precipitations. Data sets can be stored from weather stations, satellites or other meteorological instruments. Data collected, you should cover a significant time work to capture seasonal variations and long term trends. Now I'll show you my data. In this example, we'll talk about weather prediction analysis. This is my CSV file of data. I have taken the precipitation maximum temperature I told you earlier as well. So we'll talk about the uh, data. Here is my Python. Yeah, here it is. So yeah. So over here is an example. I've taken a data set of weather forecast by which we're going to predict the nature of the weather. For example, when it's going to rain, drizzle, snow, or sunny. Here it is. When will it going to drizzle, rain, snow, or sunny? We will going to predict it by various methods like data visualization using histograms, pie chart, and uh, by using various machine learning models. So over here, what I have done is, uh, what I have done is like firstly like taking my local uh, CSV file and printing it over here. I have just taken the top 10, but if I just remove it, top 10, if you want to see the whole my data, if I run it, 
it will show you my like i have so many datas i've collected like about 1461 rows and there are six columns so it's been a huge data i have collected and um, if you want to collect the data then you can use there are so many foreign websites on the uh, on the website but uh, on google but i'll suggest kaggle kaggle is the best option to take and collect data i have taken this data from kaggle only so this is the best way to analyze data and kaggle gives you a perfect and uh, good visualization of your data so we'll go back to our jupyter notebook yeah so i have just read this data in my data file this is my directory i'm not going to show this but uh, it's fine uh this i've described the data how what uh like description of my data like how much is being count mean standard deviation minimum 25 percent of my data like precipitation 25 percent of my precipitation 25 percent of my like you can do this by describing your data what's the maximum value and all so in this, in the second one, I have just put in the uh, what what kind of data type is there. It's been integer, and what and the number of bits I have. It's been printed the number of bits. Uh, in this, you can print the only the weather column. Like I have only the weather column right over here. Like it will going to rain or drizzle or snow or sun. So it so in that it has just like printed the drizzle, rain, snow, fog, etc. And the data type as well so and the index value just started from zero one four six one the number of rows or the number of columns is my is one four six one and in this it's been printed the columns that i've taken date precipitation temperature maximum minimum wind weather and data type of object like precipitation temperature minimum maximum wind weather etc and the date and in this i have figured out yeah so in this i figured out the unique value of wind like in this the wind has 4.7 the unique value that is 4.7 if it's 4.7 is repeating it will not going to print again 4.7 but it will print the unique value like 4.7 4.5 2.3 6.1 6 but it will not repeat the value over here it's been repeating but it's not repeat over there in jupyter notebook so that's what i'm printing is uh in the same case with precipitation so now so now we'll talk about we have just collected the data and we have just done the basic operations on it so we'll talk about data visualization visualizing the result of weather prediction analysis using machine learning models in python can provide valuable insights and enhance the integrity of the model's performance so in the given example we will going to plot many graphs by using different different libraries of python you will going to plot simple graphs scattered plot graph by changing both x and y labels histograms and pie charts so in this firstly i have uh, made a simple graph by just giving the precipitation uh, versus like uh, four graphs of precipitation maximum temperature minimum temperature and wind speed it's a very basic graph you can also do that by like it, i have done this in the previous thing as well you can see that i've imported three libraries that matplotlib plt and seaborn and uh, that helps in importing the libraries in python and helps in doing the graph and now i have plotted a scatter plot in which i have labeled everything that what should be my y axis what should be my x axis and i have labeled it's, it's my that my title this is the title i have labeled that my title should be scattered plot and how much size should be there like what should be my scale i have like mentioned that as well that you can also do that but the main thing you have to do is to import these three libraries then only you can plot different different graphs so i have plot scattered plot graph and you can also do the histograms this is the histogram i have done that weather prediction is my title x is my wind and weather is my y axis uh, sorry uh, yeah weather is my y axis and this show means that it's been shown it's been visible to me so it's 10.7 is my what can we say is the scale okay and this is you can show that now is my pie chart it's not been running uh, i don't know where it went why it doesn't came yeah the pie chart came this is my pie chart in which uh, i have given the instructions again this is my 
local file reading it's been my local file and it's been data one weather one all these things we can dig rain how much has been rain it's been snow that much it will show you each and everything labels went parent id showed drizzle fog sun and etc so this is my again my scatter plot the first one scatter plot i showed is uh, the i have like temperature minimum on x and y axis and maximum temperature on x axis but in this i have reversed the order maximum temperature is on my y axis and on x axis i have minimum temperature so yeah so this is all about data visualization now if we talk about data pre processing once the data is collected pre processing steps are crucial to ensure its quality and sustainability for machine learning this involves handling missing values normalizing numerical features in coding categorical variables and potentially aggregating data on a temporal or spatial scale clean and well structured data is essential for training reliable machine learning models data process pre processing includes first step that is data cleansing that means removing missing or inconsistent data points to ensure data quality second is normalization scaling the data to a standard range for effective model training third is feature selection that is identify the most relevant features for weather prediction models and development now if i go to my jupyter notebook to my analysis data we'll i'll show you that now we'll going to implement machine learning model for analyzing and predicting the possible outcomes of our data first we will going to start with a very basic technique that is train test technique i have written the appropriate command which you can see in the first we will going to split our data in training set and testing set so in this i have uh, split the data into training test and testing test i have given the appropriate variable as well so the trained model on training set and lastly test the model on training set and evaluate the performance and for that we have to import certain libraries and in that i have imported uh, certain libraries the appropriate libraries that should be imported now coming to the next step i have used k nearest labor classifier algorithm to make predictions on new or unseen data points see you can see the k label uh, k neighbors classifiers i have imported the k labor classifiers model in which and k nn is a simple and effective supervised learning algorithm used for classification and regression task for that i have used k neighbors classify model in this model we have to create an instance of knn classifier specifying the number of neighbors that is n neighbors i have classified k is equal to 1 my the k value is equal to 1 and then fit the model to your training data so over here i have taken value k is equal to 1 and finally we have to fit model in which i have fitted my model on our knn model providing the featured matrix x train and corresponding target models y train now we can see it's been successfully evaluated i have done i will run this program on my jupyter and i can see that it's been uh, here why it's going to be error okay i have not specified my value of x over here if i take my if i just copy paste this thing and then uh, run it again let's let's copy paste whole thing and then run it again and then run it again because i think it's yeah you can see that it's been evaluated successfully in that i have taken k value is equal to 1 next i have used the score technique it provides accuracy of our prediction if i run it again you will see that is the point the the output is coming out to be 0.9972 and such a big number we can just say that uh that my accuracy of our program is 99.72621 and so on up to percent that means in short we can say that our accuracy of our program is 99.72% in this it provides accuracy of our prediction it will compare the value of x and y and give going to give the value of more accurately and we have just seen and last model i have used is a prediction model 
predict method for making predictions of our data set. Once the model is trained, we can use the predict method to make predictions on new data set. This is typically done on a testing set or any new data points we want to classify. The predict method takes the feature of a new data points, x test in this case, and returns a predicted label or value. And then lastly, what I have done this mean is been predicted accurately, like in what sense, like when should it come to be rain, or when should it come to be sunny, or when should it come into drizzle or foggy or anything else, or when it should be coming to snow. And after making predictions, we can evaluate the performance of our model using various ML models, depending on whether we are working on classification or regression task. For classification tasks, we might want to use metrics such as accuracy, prediction, recall, F1 score, etc. Over here, we have just talked about the basics. We have just used fit and predict model. That means fit has been evaluated successfully over here and predict model. So, we'll... Uh, We'll go back to our thing and we have discussed the data pre-processing, -pre choosing a machine learning model we have talked about. And we'll lastly, if I talk about that statistical techniques plays a very crucial role in data analysis, what we have done is this only. So we have successfully analyzed a basic data set or weather prediction model. We have learned implementing many basic Python libraries, machine learning models used in Python, and a basic data analysis of a given data set given. And in conclusion, reviewing machine learning models for weather prediction in Python enhances forecast accuracy by extracting insights from complex data set, model selection, data set quality, and pre-processing are critical factors with visualization, aiding comprehension, acknowledging atmospheric complexities, collaboration between data scientists and meteorological is a key. This fusion promises from premise forecast benefiting diverse industries, the involving synergy between data-driven insights and meteorological expertise signifies a tech transformical leap towards adaptive and reliable way of prediction. And now, with this, I end my video and thank you very much for watching my video.